Welcome to our Sports Briefing Show. Today, we've got some exciting updates from the world of sports. First up, Philip Chittle has made a triumphant return to the New York Rangers lineup for Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Final against the Florida Panthers. Despite missing most of the season due to a suspected concussion, Chittle is back and ready to make an impact. Meanwhile, the Panthers are sticking with their tried and true lineup from Game 4. Stay tuned to see how this thrilling series unfolds. Next, the Chicago Bears are set to join the ranks of HBO's Hard Knocks participants this summer. As the 18th team to feature in the popular documentary series, the Bears will give fans an inside look at their training camp and preparations for the upcoming season. The first episode airs on August 6, so mark your calendars for an exclusive behind-the-scenes experience. Lastly, Boston Celtics power forward Draymond Green has fired back at critics who claim the team had an easy path to the NBA Finals. Green emphasized the Celtics' resilience and hard work, noting their impressive performance in the finals so far. He also pointed out that similar criticisms were not leveled at the Warriors' 2017 run to the finals. Please stay tuned for more details on these stories and other sports news. Thank you for watching, and please continue to stay tuned for detailed coverage. Associated Press, Philip Chittle made a triumphant return to the New York Rangers lineup for Game 5 of the Eastern Conference Final against the Florida Panthers, replacing Blake Wheeler. Chittle, who had been sidelined for most of the season due to a suspected concussion, played in the first three games of the series but was rested in Game 4. Wheeler, who had just returned from a leg injury, unfortunately committed a penalty in overtime that led to Sam Reinhardt's power play goal, tying the series 2-2. This marked Chittle's fifth game since his return in the second round against Carolina, while the Panthers maintained their lineup from Game 4, showing no changes. Yahoo US the Chicago Bears are set to join an illustrious list of NFL teams featured on HBO's Hard Knocks documentary series, as announced by the NFL, the Bears, and Max. The Bears, who have never participated in the documentary since its inception in 2001, qualified for mandatory participation due to their absence from the series over the past decade. HBO has documented 16 teams in 21 different versions of the series so far. This summer, the Bears will be featured, alongside the New York Giants, in a new off-season version of the documentary. The Bears' journey will be showcased starting August 6, adding to the rich history of Hard Knocks that has provided fans with an in-depth look at NFL training camps and the lives of players and coaches. Yahoo US, the Boston Celtics are headed to the NBA Finals for the second time in three years, but critics have been quick to downplay their achievement, citing a supposedly weak Eastern Conference. The Celtics faced the number 8 seed Miami Heat in the first round, who were without Jimmy Butler. After a slow start, the Celtics dominated the remaining games. In the semifinals, they played the Cleveland Cavaliers, missing key players Jared Allen and Donovan Mitchell, and won the series in five games. Facing a fully healthy Indiana Pacers team in the Eastern Conference Finals, the Celtics overcame the loss of star player Tyrese Halliburton to secure a sweep. Despite these challenges, the Celtics' resilience and ability to adapt have been remarkable. Golden State Warriors' Draymond Green defended the Celtics on his podcast, emphasizing the difficulty of their journey and the need to recognize their accomplishments. The Celtics, who dominated the regular season, are set to face the winner of the Minnesota Timberwolves-Dallas Mavericks series in the finals, determined to silence their critics. Associated Press reports that New York Yankees pitcher Clark Schmidt has been placed on the 15-day injured list due to a right lat strain, sidelining him indefinitely. Manager Aaron Boone announced that Schmidt will not be throwing for four to six weeks, followed by another four to six weeks to rebuild his strength before returning to the rotation. Schmidt, who holds a 5-3 record with a 2.52 ERA, had been a key part of the Yankees' starting staff, which set an MLB record with 16 consecutive games of allowing two runs or fewer. In his last three starts, Schmidt allowed only four runs over 18 innings. Cody Morris has been called up from AAA to fill Schmidt's spot while Cody Poteet will start the upcoming game against San Francisco. Additionally, Garrett Cole, recovering from right elbow discomfort, could begin a minor league rehab stint next week if his progress continues positively. Yahoo! US delves into the resurgence of the run game in the NFL, highlighting a significant shift in offensive strategies for the 2024 season. Nate Tice joins Matt Harmon to discuss how teams are weaponizing their run game through innovative play calling and utilizing versatile players like wide receivers and tight ends in blocking schemes. The podcast explores the renaissance of specific run plays, the increased role of tight ends and offenses, and teams that have made bold moves to enhance their rushing attacks. The conversation also covers which teams might emerge as top-run teams based on 2023 data, and analyses the bottom three run games from last season, predicting potential improvements.
This episode underscores the evolving dynamics of the NFL and the strategic emphasis on a powerful run game. Yahoo US features an interview with 49ers star tight end George Kittle, who shared his optimistic outlook on the state of the franchise despite their recent Super Bowl loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. Kittle emphasized the strength of the 49ers' roster, coaching staff, and their readiness to win. Reflecting on a successful 2023 season where the team finished 12-5 and ranked high in both offensive and defensive metrics, Kittle expressed confidence in their ability to achieve their Super Bowl goals this upcoming season. He acknowledged the disappointment of not winning the Super Bowl but remains motivated by the opportunity to compete again with a talented team. Kittle highlighted the team's resilience and high character, expressing pride in being part of such an organization and optimism about their prospects for the next season. Telegraph, the Labour Party's internal conflicts, particularly the handling of Diane Abbott's situation, have raised concerns among voters. Abbott, the first black female MP, face prolonged mistreatment despite her compliance with party investigations and apologies. Many feel that Sir Keir Starmer's inability to manage this issue reflects poorly on his potential leadership. Additionally, there's criticism over Labour's ambiguous taxation plans and their approach to NHS reforms, with calls for more clarity and effective solutions for end-of-life care and GP shortages. The overall sentiment is one of skepticism towards Labour's readiness to govern, with some urging traditional conservative supporters to reconsider their stance. Yahoo US, the latest episode of MMA Junkie Radio delves into the upcoming UFC 302 event in New Jersey, highlighting the lightweight title bout between Islam Makachev and Dustin Poirier. The hosts also discuss Nick Diaz's anticipated return to the octagon against Vicente Luque. The episode offers insights into the fighters' preparations and the excitement surrounding these high-stakes matchups. As always, the show provides a mix of analysis, predictions, and fan engagement, ensuring listeners are well-informed and entertained ahead of the event. South China Morning Post, Apollo Paralini, former Samoa rugby star and current head of UAE Rugby, calls for increased support from World Rugby for lower-tier nations. As his UAE team prepares to face Hong Kong in the Asia Rugby Championship, Paralini emphasizes the need for substantial funding and more competitive matches to ensure these teams can compete at higher levels. He highlights the challenges faced by amateur players against professional counterparts and the importance of developing a robust rugby infrastructure in the UAE. The upcoming match against Hong Kong is seen as a crucial test for the UAE team, which aims to prove its worth on the international stage. David Skins shoots 8 under 62 to take first round lead in RBC Canadian Open. The Toronto Star. David Skins lit up the Hamilton Golf and Country Club with an impressive 8 under 62, taking the first round lead in the RBC Canadian Open. The 41-year-old Englishman, who has yet to win on the PGA Tour, executed a stellar performance with six birdies in a seven-hole stretch. His 47-foot birdie putt on the 17th hole capped off a round that left him ahead of morning starters Sam Burns and Sean O'Hare by a stroke. Reflecting on his round, Skins credited his driving accuracy and strategic play, allowing him to attack pins effectively. Notably, defending champion Nick Taylor, who made headlines last year with an 80-foot eagle putt to win, started with a 72. Rory McIlroy, a two-time Canadian Open champion, finished his round with a 66, highlighting the spirited atmosphere and the joy of playing alongside Canadian players. Skins, a former Canadian Tour player, expressed his fondness for the country and its golf courses, emphasizing his delight in returning to compete. Biden team takes aim at Trump after guilty verdict. Washington Post. In a significant development, President Biden's campaign commented on former President Donald Trump's guilty verdict in his New York hush money trial, emphasizing that no one is above the law. While the verdict was striking, campaign officials privately acknowledged that it might not drastically change the tight presidential race dynamics, with Trump's loyal base likely to stand by him. The campaign's communications director, Michael Tyler, underscored that the only way to keep Trump out of the Oval Office is through the ballot box. Biden's campaign plans to focus on Trump's record and policy proposals rather than his legal troubles. Trump, convicted of falsifying business records to hide payments related to an affair, denied the charges and is expected to appeal. Despite the legal drama, Biden's campaign remains focused on broader issues, while the president himself refrained from formal comments, maintaining a stance of respecting the rule of law. Trump's team accused Biden of politicizing the Justice Department, although the case was brought by a New York prosecutor. As Biden marked the anniversary of his son Beau's death, Trump continued to assert that the real verdict would come from the voters in November. Why Johnson believes Giants' frustrating farm system trending upward. Yahoo US. 
San Francisco Giants chairman Greg Johnson expressed optimism about the franchise's farm system, attributing the team's recent success to its improved player development. Speaking on The TK Show, Johnson acknowledged the frustration with the Giants' previous draft picks and their low contributions in terms of war, wins above replacement. However, he highlighted the positive trend, crediting president of baseball operations Farhan Zaidi and the scouting team for the depth and talent now emerging from the minors. Johnson pointed to players like Hunter Bishop, who, despite past injuries, are now performing well and bolstering the team. The Giants' reliance on top prospects such as Heliot Ramos, Luis Matos, and Marco Luciano has been pivotal, especially with the team facing numerous injuries and poor play earlier in the season. These young players have injected energy and excitement, keeping the Giants competitive in the NL wildcard race. The franchise's focus on developing a robust farm system reflects its strategy to maintain competitiveness without solely relying on costly free agent signings, underscoring the importance of nurturing homegrown talent. The Toronto star, Arizona Diamondbacks ace Zach Gallen had a short-lived appearance against the New York Mets, exiting after just six pitches due to a strained right hamstring. The 28-year-old, who has consistently been a top contender for the NL Cy Young Award, was visibly in pain after throwing a fastball to DJ Stewart. Manager Tori Lovello and an athletic trainer promptly intervened, leading Gallen to limp off the field. This isn't the first time Gallen has faced hamstring issues, similar incidents occurred in 2019 and 2021. The Diamondbacks, already struggling with injuries to key pitchers Merrill Kelly and Eduardo Rodriguez, saw rookie Bryce Jarvis stepping in for Gallen, who had a promising 5-2 record with a 3.12 ERA in 11 starts. Guardian, the grand finale of the 96th annual Scripps National Spelling Bee is set to captivate audiences at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in National Harbor, Maryland. From an initial pool of millions of students, eight exceptional spellers have emerged as finalists after rigorous rounds of competition. This year's finalists include Rishabh Saha, who has visited 59 U.S. national parks, and Shrey Parikh, who authored a book at age seven to support Wildlife Conservancy. The stakes are high, with the champion set to receive a $50,000 cash prize, a commemorative medal, and the coveted Scripps Cup trophy. The event, no longer broadcast on ESPN, has found a new home on Ion Television, drawing significant viewership and maintaining its status as a beloved intellectual competition. Guardian, in the rich history of the Scripps National Spelling Bee, few stories are as heartwarming as that of William Cashore, who won the 1954 competition at the age of 14. Kishore's winning word was, transept, and his victory led to a whirlwind of celebrations, including meeting Vice President Richard Nixon and appearing on The Ed Sullivan Show. His prizes included a 25-volume Encyclopedia Britannica and a $500 cash award, which were significant at the time. Now 84, Kishore looks back on his victory with fondness, recalling how his parents supported his spelling endeavors. His story is a testament to the enduring legacy of the spelling bee, which continues to inspire young spellers across the nation even as it evolves with new rules and formats to challenge the brightest minds. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.